Hey guys, my name is Isa, and I just wanted to talk about pointers. So I've been tutoring for the past year, and the number one thing that all my classmates have struggled with at the community college for computer science is pointers. And it's kind of one of those weird concepts where once you get it, it's good, but until you get to that point, who are you going to be kind of struggling? And I want to I want to kind of alleviate that. So let's talk about pointers. So I'm, I'm going to br very briefly talk about memory. It's it's useful and you'll make a bunch of connections if you understand memory, but it is not technically necessary for, you know, our ability to use pointers. So if we draw a little diagram, so this is our memory. Now, memory is just like running programs. They take up system memory. This is like short term storage that goes away when you turn off the computer. So this is also known as RAM. You might have seen that on spec sheets for laptops and computers. Don't need to worry too much about how it works. It is very fascinating and I will en encourage you to go down that rabbit hole sometime in the future on YouTube. It's, it's a great rabbit hole. You're going to learn a lot. But I think that's beyond the scope of this video. So without further ado, let's just talk about, you know, variables. You probably have used it. I'm assuming you have, especially if you're watching this video. And so let's make a variable. And x is 5. Simple. I don't think I need to explain anything there. So when we make a variable, what's happening in memory is we are allocating a, a value. We're, we're allocating a variable in memory with the value 5. So this is its name, and this is value. Now, what if we want to use this... Well, what if we want to what if we want a copy of this? You know, you might have you might know that we can work with copy. So if I say y equal to x, what what do you think happens here? Does so if if I if I print I'm a I'm gonna print both these values. So I'm gonna print x and then I'm gonna print y. So on paper, they look like they're the same. Like y is x and x is y, right? So we could just say both x and y are 5. But that's not actually what's happening under the hood. And to prove it to you, that's kind of where we get into pointers. So pointers are just numbers. So if we, so what's actually happening is that we have this new variable called y, which also has the same value 5. These are not the same variable. These are two separate variables, as you see the, by their... Um, declaration we're, we're declaring declaring a new variable so that's what this is doing so it's allocating two new variables in memory but they happen to have the same value if we use the reference operator so this ampersand this is called the reference operator so I'm gonna duplicate these lines and on the bottom one I'm gonna just put the address the reference so now it's gonna print some really long numbers so this is the address of these variables. Notice how they are not exactly the same. All the way up to here, they're the same, but then this last digit changes. And that refers to this, to the memory. So in memory, we have our names, which is what we use in the program to refer to them, but the computer doesn't see names. X and Y, they don't exist. What exists are numbers, and these are the numbers that it's referring to. So when we have a pointer, we are just capturing this number and using it. So what I can do, and this is how you make a pointer. So the way you make a pointer is by saying int x, or sorry, we're not going to use x. We're going to say int star. Star makes the pointer. So int, so you could have a char, char pointer too, but we're going to use ints for now. You can have any data type be a pointer, by the way, even programmer defined ones, so like classes. Well, that's getting ahead of ourselves. So we're going to say p underscore x. So p for pointer underscore and then x, the name of the, the variable we're making a pointer to. So here's our memory. It's this. So we could put this in directly, but that's kind of a janky solution. I don't even think it's going to work. Is it going to work? Yeah, no, it's not even going to work. <laughs> Never mind. You can't do that. So... What do we do if we want to get this? Well, you did notice that 
ampersand x is what gave us this, this address. So we can just take this ampersand x and put it in here. So now we have a variable. So if I count this variable, so count, and I'm just going to copy it because I'm kind of getting lazy of typing this out all the time. And I'm going to change this this to p underscore x. So notice these are exactly the same now. Ignore this. This is the y variable. So what we've ended up doing, and I wish I didn't delete that, but that's fine. So we have our x, our x, which has the value 5 in here. We have our y, but we don't care about that, so forget this for a second. And now we have another entity in our code that points to this exact same variable. So any changes we make, for example, to x, so if we if we change x, so like I'm going to comment this out so we don't need to worry about that. And if we make a change to x, we can say, we can say, I don't know, x plus 1, right? So x is equal to x plus 1. I'm going to get rid of this. And then I print x again. Become 6. No big deal, right? Yeah, nothing. Now, if we want to change p of x, we can we can do that too. We can say dereference p of x, because remember, p of x is just the address, just this address. If we use the star in front of it, we get the value at that address. So in this case, it would be 6, because we just added it up here. So if I say dereference p of x equal to dereference p of x plus 1, and then we, you know, do a count. And we're not going to do a count of p of x. We're going to do a count of x. Now, it's 7. So we're working on the same variable. We're not working on a copy, which is what we were doing with this y variable. And that's kind of the power of pointers. We can access memory directly. And because we can access it directly, that means we don't, we don't, work with copies it's more efficient but in some cases you do want to copy especially with functions so if we have a math function for example we don't necessarily want to change the original value and this goes into this idea of passing by value and passing by reference which is just a little bit beyond the scope of this video but I'll still briefly touch on it for those of you who kind of already have a basic understanding of pointers so if we make a function I'm going to make it a void function, nothing too crazy. And it's going to be add 1. And it's going to take an int and then a value. I'm going to call that variable. And all it's going to do is take that value and add 1 to it. So, nothing, nothing crazy. So, what do you think would happen if we called it on x? And just to simplify it, I'm going to keep get rid of all this logic keep it simple oops okay so we have a value 5 that's it so if I run this right now it's just 5 don't even need this either just the value 5 now if I call this function so I'm gonna call it down here actually I'm gonna call it up here so if I say add 1 to X and then I do this again It's still 5. What gives? Well, what gives is that we we made a copy of x. So if we have our piece of memory again, drawing a memory, so we made this, val this variable x, which has 5, so here's x. When we made this function, we made a copy, just like this y. This is exactly what happened. So we, we made a new one called value, and it also has the value 5. So inside this function, we added 1 to it. But in the outside, we're still working on this. So this function is working on this. Main is working on this. So if we want to overcome that, we need, we need to pass not, not the value inside it, but the whole thing. And that's where pointers are going to come in. So we can recreate this function. So I'm going to comment it out. So this is the pass by value we can do a pass by reference by doing void add one and pointer value 
and now I'm going to call it reference just to keep it a little different in pointer reference and we're going to say dereference of reference oh god that's poor word choices plus one so now if we run this now this has an error because this is this is not a pointer this is a variable so the way we overcome this is simply like that and that's kind of what we did down here so now we're doing this instead of this I really hope I'm not losing you guys if you're completely lost don't worry give it time play around with pointers for the for those of you who might already have a little bit of a start I'm hoping that this kind of illustrates why we need them so if I run this now we had a 5 from up here now we have a 6 after running this function now technically you could instead of doing it like this you could just make it a reference so like this and then you don't need this here so notice the ampersand goes in here instead of in here and this will work the same and this might, might actually be simpler to use but the same like idea is happening behind the scenes so no matter how you write it you're still sending the address of the variable instead of the value inside the variable and that's the difference between pass by value and pass by reference if you need a more in-depth dive into it we kind of touched on it briefly I will be more than willing to make a separate video so let me know anyways I hope this was helpful Good luck. Godspeed, you guys, with the pointers. This is like a huge concept. Unfortunately, not many languages actually use pointers. But if you understand how it works in C++, all other languages do this under the hood, even if you can't do it yourself. So like Java. I'm looking at you, Java. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways, have a good day. Think on it some more, play around with it some more, watch some videos on it, other videos. There's lots of good channels that cover this stuff. And, you know, good luck.